Hey guys, so I just wanted to make a quick video on the process that I go through for heat treating my knives. Uh, this is going to be uh, specifically on 1095 high carbon steel uh, as the methods will vary from steel to steel based on their carbon content, their steel makeup, uh, and various other factors. So again, this is just for 1095 and this is just my method. Uh, Probably just about every knife maker or heat treater is different, uh, but I've been seeming to get some pretty good results uh, from this way, and uh, this is pretty much in line with a lot of the research I've done. Uh, if at any point uh, you have any suggestions or see where maybe I'm making a mistake or could do something better, uh, by all means feel free to comment or give suggestions, uh, and I will look further into that. Uh, first, I just want to kind of give the basic breakdown, and then I'll probably go into a little bit more detail of each phase, uh, just to make sure I cover everything. But uh, the first thing I do uh, is obviously get my knife prepped for heat treating, and uh, that's simply to rough profile the blade out, uh, get the edge grind done, or the blade grind rather, and then uh, drill any lanyard holes or uh, holes for the handle and get that all out of the way. Uh, and then I like to take the factory finish off as well just to reduce uh, any scaling uh, as much as possible. Uh, this knife is almost ready for heat treat. I uh, just wanted to give an example. Uh, well, I'll go ahead, go ahead and go over that later uh, and continue through my process here. Uh, once the knife is ready, I will place it in the oven and uh, bring everything up to temperature and while the oven is heating up along with a knife blade uh, I will heat my quenching oil as well uh, and I'll go over why I do that in a minute as well uh, but the next thing I do uh, while those two things are heating up is I'll go ahead and preheat my tempering oven uh, make sure that's ready to go uh, once everything is heated up and ready uh, I'll let my blade soak for about 10 minutes uh, at the final temperature uh, and then just before I open the door I will quickly transfer my oil from the pot into a quenching jar uh, and then just as quickly open the door pull the blade out and dip it in the quenching oil uh, after that's done I will let the blade uh, kinda sit in the oil for a couple minutes just to make sure it drops down to a temperature that I can safely handle it without burning myself uh, then I will clean the excess oil off with some mild soap and warm water uh, just to reduce any burn off in the tempering process and hopefully keep my garage from smelling too bad. Uh, and then I will put it in the tempering oven at the required temperature for the required time uh, until that's done. Uh, and then when that's finished, I will simply let the blade cool to room temperature. Uh, by itself without quenching it or cooling it by force. Uh, now as far as specifics, uh, like I said this blade is almost ready, uh, but concerning the blade grind you really want to leave a little bit of thickness at the very edge. Uh, you definitely don't want to sharpen it yet and you don't want to make it too thin relative to the original stock thickness. Uh, simply because if it gets too thin in one spot, it could warp, twist, or crack as you quench it. And uh, it seems to do better and stay straighter if you leave it uh, as thick as you can. Uh, and usually that's about the thickness of a dime for your average knife, uh, if not a little bit thinner. Uh, and again, it definitely depends on the original thickness of the stock. Uh, if you're using like a 16th inch piece of stock, obviously the thickness of a dime would be too thick. Uh, but you just want to ensure that it cools evenly and that one part's not too thin uh, because you will get a little bit of twisting, warping, or cracking, like I said. Uh, another way that you can kind of help with that is to preheat your oil. Uh, I usually heat it to about 120 to 150, somewhere in between there, uh, because you don't want to quench it at room temperature, especially... Uh, like now my shop's probably about 55 degrees, uh, so that's definitely too cold. Uh, so I like to bring my oil to temperature and that yields better results, a harder quench, and just more consistency overall. 
Uh, and then as far as uh, when you're getting ready to quench, you don't want to waste too much time after you take the oil off the hot plate. Uh, as it does start to immediately cool. And you don't want to leave your oven open for too long or take too long to bring the blade into the oil because uh, everything does start cooling pretty quickly. Uh, another thing I will mention, I do like to uh, turn the heating element off when I am reaching inside there uh, just so there's no chance of contacting uh, any live voltage while that uh, element is heating because uh, this is set for about 220. Um, as far as the tempering process is concerned, uh, that temperature and time could vary depending on your steel, your preference, or the hardness you wish to achieve. Uh, I like to keep mine at about 400 degrees Fahrenheit for about an hour and a half for each process. Uh, and if the blade comes out nice and straight from the quench, uh, I usually only do one. Uh, I might start doing two, uh, let's see if that yields any better results. but. Uh, so far one's been working pretty well for me and uh, as far as the oven's concerned you do want to get a uh, meat thermometer as these uh, analog dials are not very accurate for your average uh, toaster oven uh, as you can see this one's actually set to about 375 or so and uh, it's actually reading 400 on the meat thermometer or the oven thermometer so there is a little bit of play there. Uh, make sure you test your oven beforehand and get it to the proper temperature. Uh, once that's done, once my tempering process is over, uh, it's simply just a matter of removing the scale and getting it down to the final finish, uh, putting your handle on and uh, sharpening your blade and finishing your knife. Uh, that's pretty much the basic process. Uh, it's definitely a science in and of itself. Uh, I, I'm sure I haven't explained uh, every little aspect as much of it is over my head. Uh, but this is really just the simplest breakdown of what I do and it does seem to work pretty well. Uh, if you have any suggestions or better ways to do it or if you know of any part of this process that I'm doing wrong, uh, by all means feel free to comment and uh, let me know. I will look into it further. but. So far it seems like it's working very well for me uh, as far as the final product and edge retention. So uh, that's really basically it. Uh, hopefully I didn't leave anything too important out. Uh, like I said, this process will vary from steel to steel. Uh, especially if you go up into stainless steels, uh, there's all kinds of different uh, temperatures for different blades depending on uh, what kind of hardness and temper you want to re achieve. Uh, there's different quenching methods, different tempering methods, and uh, all of that. So I definitely encourage you guys to do an in-depth study uh, for both the steel that you normally use as well as steels that you might get into in the future because uh, there's definitely a lot to learn and uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. Uh, and also I encourage you guys to maybe test a few methods out because uh, you might like one more than the other. But uh, that's the way I'm doing it right now. It could change in the future. Uh, I would like to do a little bit more extensive testing uh, just to make sure that this is uh, the best way for me to go. But like I said, so far so good. And uh, we're going to keep doing it this way for a while and maybe get a little bit more testing in. But uh, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, please feel free to comment, rate, and subscribe if you haven't already. Uh, feel free to leave any suggestions or uh, just any facts that you might have on this process that I might have left out. And uh, I thank you all for watching, and I hope you're all having a good day. See ya.